Hello everybody, my name is Simon Moff, I'm working for Keysight and I show you the implementation of the DFE feature for DDR5 technology and how we uh, did that uh, for uh, the advanced design system here in the memory designer uh, environment. You see here a very simple system and I show you how we modeled here the AMI model. We have different AMI model builders basically. This here uh, is the PCI Express one for instance here. Uh, then we have the USB AMI, the Ethernet. But here we want to talk about memory interfaces, DR5 respectively. And so um, if we open that you see here you can create a new model for instance test. It's like a wizard based and um, you see here you can select between a receiver on the controller, the DRAM or a driver. We want to do a DRAM receiver here and the modulation scheme is uh, zero 01 only, so a non-return to zero 01. And the PAM4 and PAM3 are also available like for instance GDDR6X, uh, GDDR7 or any other pathfinding you want to do here basically. So if we then go next um, what was uh, explained in the technology session, we have all the delay for instance, the VREF calibration, the, the CTLE, the gain compression basically. But here we only want to do for that particular example the, the DFE for instance. And you have the tabs here, you can add tabs, you can delete one, you can edit them, you have different formats, you can enter them uh, with respect to the link to the units. Um, and we have also the clocking here uh, so that you can refer to the DQS and uh, the, the, the clock if you want. And let's say also the typical reserve parameters for all the cheater values. So if we are basically done here, we can uh, save and build it. Uh, save basically means you see here we receive a test, uh, what I called it, configuration file so we can edit it later on. Uh, here now uh, we can also build the model and then you see there is a AMI model which is built, the IBIS model which is built, the respective uh, configuration file and then the DLL for uh, Linux it would be the SO files here um, what will be generated. That's it basically. So back to our um, very simple system here and uh, let me uh, introduce you here shortly. This is a motherboard with a connector and the SODIM routing and here is the DRAM. Um, we are doing a DDR5 write. Let's increase the speed so that we also can benefit from the DFE here. Uh, apply that and let's say here is the controller driving uh, on sitting on the motherboard and um, the, the AMI model we now find here in the DRAM, you see here I have a respective uh, model. Uh, what I, I use here, I will introduce that to you shortly. For instance, here is that test model we have built. You uh, remember I pressed the button, so this is I will from one. Here is the file name, and basically you see here is the pin list and the model, and uh, this is the algorithmic model which is generated referring to the DLL, the files, the, the, the name here. And you have now two possibilities. Either you copy the algorithmic lot, uh, model statement into an IBIS file you have already existing, or you take from the existing IBIS file the pin list and uh, edit the model name and update your model respectively here. And uh, as mentioned, you link in the model, then you enable the component on the SODIM where you want to link the model to here with the yes include, and then you switch on here the uh, DRAM pins here by enabling them with yes. Go to the model setup and let's say not to edit any DRAM pin, you can group them. I put that in here for the DQ. And now you see we find here our DRAM in example, what I have imported, the test tool, doesn't matter which one. And you see here all these typical parameters, the jitter parameters, and here are the AMI parameters coming up, the reserved ones like the jitter ones, and the model specifics, what we have edited so far. And you see here the DFE tabs are enabled, um, or 
DFE functionality is enabled and the DFE tab here as we have added it so far. And that's it basically, so you can then press the simulation button. Okay, before pressing the simulation button and looking to the data eyes, I want to show you also another example. Here we have the same in an, how to say, not a slot motherboard implementation, but an onboard DDR5 commodity DRAM, like for instance also LP DDR5, what would be possible, uh, where you drive the controller motherboard directly to the DRAM. Um, and um, here we have parameterized the AMI settings because you want also to optimize that. And let's say if, um, if you look into such a model and you see here it's linked, the, the pins are enabled, basically the same. Um, and then you have here the DRAM uh, group. Um, you see the input model, it's a targeted rank, the in model with 48 ohm. ODT and if you go to the AMI parameters here and the model specific ones you see here also in that one the DC uh, offset calibration was switched on so a re-ref calibration and the DC offset was entered so that the data is shifted respectively there is also a CTLE gain in that example implemented and you have uh, some some poles and some zeros and also the DFE here is there and you see the there is a DFE initialization there is an adaptive uh, run uh, included and then there are the tabs basically so with that parameterization and you just have to define the variables here you can optimize your setup then as well and look for the best the setting you uh, want to have and if we then look to the data eyes here in that particular example you see this is at the controller output and you see here a ring back um, from the driver hidden by the reflection of the channel and then at the output of the channel you see here this the strong RC damping crosstalk effects and, and other stuff of course like ISI and uh, therefore uh, we can restore the data eye. On a two-slot system, the data eye would be completely closed. But, but even here in such an easy implementation, DFE helps you to open up the data eye you see on that respective uh, area so that you have more margin in your system and in total a better signal integrity. Here I show you a third example where you see also a lot of AMI variables are in. But this is a different one. It's not a statistical simulation, what uh, we have shown before, where you can uh, make use of the total AMI functionality. This is a transient example where we mimic the same setup, basically with your DRAM in a read case. That's why the arrow is pointing to that direction, where the DRAM is driving and the controller is receiving. And with that uh, respective setup, you can run in some minutes a virtual measurement. So what does that mean? Uh, this memory probe, um, let's say, and we have here also a new compliance probe, uh, helps you to uh, hand over the simulation results as a virtual measurement to the scope software. And here basically you then have the recording and the measurements and this is all done automatically. And so my colleague uh, will show you the test and measurement setup in a separate video and the DDR5 compliance app runs automatically all these tests and checks the parameters. We have now more than hundreds implemented to cover the, the specification of what you can measure on a DDR5 system. And to make it easier for the user, we uh, write that out in a HTML report where you get all the listings and all the pass fail criteria. And you can look through uh, all over 16 pages, for instance, all the data eyes and all the parameters as you would have processed the, the simulation as a measurement and would have that on the screen. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, this was uh, our implementation into the ADS environment memory designer for DDR5 AMI. And the next video uh, sequence in that series is about a test and measurement implementation. Thanks again and bye-bye.